pay. I know I said I probably would not do one of these for a while, but I just now realized that I shorted the first video for the GROL license. So let's finish the first sub element or element. Um, some of the terms as we go further in, I might not be able to pronounce correctly, so I'll do my best. One, 19 Delta One. What are the antenna requirements of a VHF telephony coast maritime utility or ship station? Correct answer is A. The shore or onboard antenna must be vertically polarized. 119 Delta Two. What is the antenna requirement of a radio telephone installation aboard a passenger vessel? B. The antenna must be vertically polarized as a non-directional and efficient as it is practicable for the transmission and reception of ground waves over seawater. 119 Delta Three. What is the most common type of antenna for GMDSS VHF? It's D. None of the above. 119 Delta 4. What is the purpose of the antenna tuner? A. It alters the electrical characteristics of the antenna to match the frequency in use. 119 Delta 5. What advantage does a vertical whip have over a long wire? And it is B. It radiates equally well in all directions. 119 Delta 6. A vertical whip antenna has a radiation pattern best described by... C, a circle. 120 Delta 1. For a small passenger vessel inspection, reserve power batteries must be tested. D, at intervals not exceeding 12 months or during the inspection. 120 Delta 2. What are the characteristics of a reserve source of power under GMDSS? C, must be independent of the ship's electrical system when the RSE is needed to supply power to the GMDSS equipment. 120 Delta 3, which of the following terms is defined as a backup power source that provides power to the radio installations for the purpose of conducting distress and safety communications when the vessel's main and emergency generators cannot? That's B, a reserve source of power. 120 Delta 4, in the event of failure of the main and emergency sources of electrical power, what is the term for the source required to supply the GMDSS console with power for conducting distress and other communications? That is C, reserve source of energy. 120 Delta 5, what is the requirement for emergency and reserve power in GMDSS radio installations? D. All newly constructed ships under GMDSS must have both emergency and reserve power sources for radio communications. 120 Delta 6. What is the meaning of reserve source of energy? Answer is A. A the supply of electrical energy sufficient to operate the radio installations for the purpose of conducting distress and safety communications in the event of failure of the ship's main and emergency sources of electrical power 121 delta 1 what is an epirb and that is a a battery operated emergency position indicating radio beacon that floats free of a sinking ship 21 delta 2 says when are epirb batteries changed b after emergency use or within the month and year replacement date printed on the EPIRB. 21 Delta 3. If a ship sinks, what device is designed to float free of the mothership is turned on automatically and transmits a distress signal? And that is A. An emergency position indicating radio beacon. 21 Delta 4. How do you cancel a false EPIRB distress alert? C. Notify the Coast Guard or Rescue Coordination Center at once. 21 Delta 5. What is the COSPAS-SARSAT system? And that's B. An International Satellite-Based Search and Rescue System. 
21 Delta 6, what is an advantage of a 406 megahertz satellite EPIRB? And that's all of the above. So it's compatible with the COSPASS SARSAT satellites and Global Maritime Distress Safety System regulations. It provides a fast, accurate method for Coast Guard locating and rescuing persons in distress. And it includes a digitally encoded message containing the ship's identity and nationality. 22 Delta 1, in which frequency band does a search and rescue transponder operate? And that is D, 9 gigahertz. 22 Delta 2, how should the signal from a search and rescue radar transponder appear on a radar display? C, a series of 12 equally spaced dots. 22 Delta 3, what is the purpose of a SART audible tone alert? A, it informs survivors that assistance may be nearby. 22 Delta 4, what? Which statement is true regarding the SART? And that's D. This is a 9 gigahertz transponder capable of being received by a vessel's X-band navigational radar system. 22 Delta 5, what at what point does a SART begin transmitting? C. If it has been placed on in the on position, it will respond when it has been interrogated by a 9 gigahertz radar signal. 22 Delta 6. How can SART's effective range be maximized? B. The SART should be held as high as possible. Twenty three Delta One says which statement is not true regarding the requirements of survival craft portable two way VHF radio telephone equipment? That answer is C. Operate simplex on channel seventy and at least one other channel. Uh, twenty three Delta Two says which statement is not true regarding the requirements of survival craft portable two way VHF radio equipment? And that's A operation on channel thirteen. And that's not true. 23 Delta 3, which, or with what other stations may portable survival craft transmitters communicate? And that's all of the above. So communication is permitted between survival craft. Communication is permitted between survival craft and ship. And communication is permitted between survival craft and rescue unit. 23 Delta 4, equipment for radio telephony use in survival craft stations under... GMDSS must have what capability? And that's A, operation on channel 16. 23 Delta 5, equipment for radio telephony use in, use in survival craft stations under GMDSS must have what characteristic? And that's all of the above. So operation on channel 16, it also needs to be watertight, and permanently a fixed antenna. 23 Delta 6, what is the minimum power of the SCT? And that's 1 watt B. 24 Delta 1, Navtex broadcasts are sent. And that's B, in categories of messages indicated by a single letter or identifier. 24 Delta 2 says MSI must be obtained by one or more of the following. And it's all of the above. A, Navtex. B, Safety Net. Or C, HF, NBDR. Uh, 24 Delta 3, which of the following is the primary frequency that is used exclusively for Navtex broadcast internationally? And that's A, 518 kilohertz. 24 Delta 4, what means are used to prevent the reception of unwanted broadcasts by vessels utilizing the Navtex system? C. Programming the receiver to reject unwanted broadcasts. 24 Delta 5. When do Navtex broadcasts typically achieve maximum transmitting range? B. Middle of the night. 25 Delta 6. What is the transmitting range of most Navtex stations? C. Typically 200 to 400 nautical miles. Also 360 to 720 kilometers. And that will conclude this section rounding out the rest of element one for the GROL. I will attempt to get 
uh, element three started element three is definitely a lot larger and i do not have all the slides completed at this time thank you for jumping in and following along